And I'm going to throw across to Wing Sing now to talk about um, his work of accelerometers and a cryptic spe species of turtle. All right, take it away. All right. So thanks for having me here. I'm Chen Sing, and I'm doing a PhD at the University of Hong Kong. So, so far, I've been mostly focusing on the movements and behaviors of freshwater turtles. So here today, I'm going to share with you about our default model of accelerometer and how it helped transform our understanding about the ecology of this elusive species. So first of all, turtles are declining all over the globe because of a multitude of human impacted, human induced impact. Yet I would say our general standing of the taxa remains pretty much very limited. So say, for example, here's my study species and the focus of my today's talk, the big headed turtle. So their populations were heavily depleted because of poaching activity, but despite the dire conservation status, there has been little information about when they become active during a day, but this information serves important lessons for assessing and managing the species, like planning a patrolling protocol or designing a monitoring scheme. So, Mostly we think they are nocturnal, but we don't know any case about is that, is that really true? So part of the major reason is that they are really small to put a track on them. The average weight of our monitoring population is like less than 300 grams. And I've rarely seen a individual that is weighting more than one kilos. So if we are to deploy tags on them, they will be lightweight. And this often comes with a trade-off that the tag we have a really brief window of for measurement and are considerably more expensive. So with this in mind, we partnered with Brian, who is our engineer for the project, and he helped us to model this accelerometer for us using Arduino platform. So the tech basically composed of four components that you can readily buy online. And this tech, those components are really cheap to produce, compact and lightweight. So we have provided all the code in the web page that you can get them from the QR code below. And a major advantage is that we are now configuring the tech sampling mode so we can set according to our own agenda. This means we can extend the battery from probably recording continuous sample for less than a day to over two to three weeks following a stratified sampling approach. So with this, we fed our data into a hidden Markov model and now we can delineate basic behavior when a turtle become active and when they are stationary. What come up with a surprise is that contrary to our common belief, instead of being a strictly nocturnal species, female presented its more crispuscular activity here and more males is more of like a Kathleen Rose species that's active both during both day and night. So the developed tech right now, we are placing it within a sleep lock bag and they adapted it within a layer of parathlam before enclosing the entire unit with epoxy. But there is still over one third of our deployed attack has different form of damages. One of the major reasons is that this turtle is highly aquatic in nature and they inhabit in rocky stream. If you look into the video, they're just high underneath the rocks. So many of the time they find their way between plates of rocks, squeezing themselves into some really small crevices. So in some cases, we have our attack scraped it off its fire surface. So because of this kind of rampant living styles that we they are having. So if we were continue we were to continue this project, I think one of the top list of my wish list is to having a battery encasing approach. The approach has to be ready to deploy, keep, and the casing material has to be both heavy duty and waterproof, while not significantly increasing their weight or the buoyancy or increasing the drag force for attack. Of course, I guess would be all of our movement ecologists dream to have a small attack, but one of the major complications, I guess, would be having a smaller battery size. So I think one of the really cool research that's recently published that if there is a more efficient power supply system, something like kinetic energy harvesting system, perhaps I guess we can resolve a lot of issues that we are having right now. And a more mechanistic perspective, I guess, another major challenge right now is to, there is limited information about how to delineate for the behavioral classification. Uh, something like a camera system that you see in this 
paper may help to help us to decode accelerometer profile into actual behavior in the field. And that would be really useful, I think, in the future. So all in all, I just want to channel out to the community that we need more study for the text for reptiles and amphibians. I mean, we are now at the age of golden age of biologging technology, but I still think there is huge taxonomic bias that we must overcome, especially for the field of herpetology. So with that, I was just thanks for having me here and thanks for listening. And I'm happy to take any of your questions. That was so cool. I didn't realize um, that you actually built, uh, designed and built the um, the, the tag. Uh, that was that was a great presentation, getting lots of um, thanks in the chat. Um, so two questions. So one, one comment, Katie, who you referenced with the stereo camera, I actually asked her to speak today and she wasn't able to make it. So she's going to be speaking at next Friday hour if you want to connect cool. with her. Um, and you, uh, it was great to see your wish list. But you said if we were to continue this, so what's your what are your plans for um, for the accelerometer system? So it's all open source. Are, are you continuing work with it? So the project is basically finished. So we placed twenty five tags over three years, yeah. and we think when our funding for continuing the work. But I think all the things are available online, and if any of you are interested in using the accelerometer, I guess if you put it in some species that is less hard to track with, they are really useful resources because they are cheap to produce. And I, I, I just see if there is any opportunities for running this project for a longer term, if we have a better approach that can help tackle the problem of body proofing and not having the entire system cracked down by turtles. Mm, interesting. I think it would be great now that we have the, we'll have a recording of your talk, we'll pop it up on Wild Labs and see and link to any of the open source stuff you've published and see what our community, if anyone else picks it up and, and um, uh, takes it forward as well, or is interested in working with you. Thank you for that talk. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm.